this tute is going to look at box plots. So what is a box plot? It's a graphic representation of some information. And the information that we use to construct a box plot is the five figure summary. And the information that makes up these five figures is the minimum, which is the lowest uh, number in your data values, the uh, Q1, which we'll come to in a second, the Q2, which is also the median, which we've learned all about, Q3, and the maximum, which is the highest value in the data set that you have. And Q1 and Q3 are sort of like mini medians, if you like. They split the data um, either side of the median, and I'll show you how that works. We have gone over finding Q1 and Q3 in another tube, but I'll just do it again here quickly to refresh. So the first step, if you want to find Q1, Q2, and Q3, Q2 being the median, is to find the median. That's the first step. So we'll go one, two, three from the bottom, one, two, three from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. There's the middle there. That's going to be the median. Now we take all the numbers to this side of the median, so not including the 15 in either group, and we go all the numbers this side of the median, and we find the median of what's either side. So we'll do it again, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. This midpoint between 3 and 7 is going to be the median. So halfway between 3 and 7 is 5, and you just find that by saying 3 plus 7 divided by 2. So this here is Q1, our lower uh, median, if you like to say. It's the lower quartile. Over here we do the same, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. Between these two points is going to be our Q3 which is halfway between 21 and 24. So you add them together and divide by 2, which is 22.5. And that's finding Q3. Now when you have an odd number of data points, you'll end up circling one of these in the middle. You'll hit a number in the middle. If I take one of these off the end here, so there's my data. I'm just going to get rid of 29, so that's not in the set. So now we have an even number of data points. This time we're going to come to a midway point, so I'll just show you that. One from the bottom, one from the top two from the bottom, two from the top, and here we go, one from the bottom, one from the top, that's going to be my midway point. So halfway between 12 and 15, 13.5. Now, when you have a line here instead of a circled number, you do include the number either side in these uh, sections, because um, when we had circled the number, it's in the middle, it doesn't really count either side, but here we've got a definite way we can count 12 and we can count 15 in each of these directions. So we'll just run that process again, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. You have a midway point between these two, and so it's going to be halfway between 3 and 7, which is 5, and that's the Q1. And over here, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, halfway between 18 and 21 is 19.5 and that's the Q3 and this here is of course the median or sometimes it's referred to as Q2 and that's finding uh, those points. Now of course the minimum and the maximum which is the other two that you need to do a box plot is the very bottom number when they're in order and the very top number when they're in order. So in this case our five figure summary would be a minimum one, the Q1 point would be five, the Q2 or median point would be 13.5, the Q3 point would be 19.5, and the maximum point would be 24. And that's the five figure summary. Now what do we do with it? So this is how you draw a box plot using the five figure summary. It's going to look something like this, a little line followed by a long horizontal one, a line and a line and a line. Oops. That's what my box is going to look like at the end, and I'll show you what all of those points correspond to. The first little point that we put on there is the minimum, so in this case it's 5. And a box plot is always drawn to a number line, to a scale, just so you know. So 5 is going to be somewhere like there. You do a tiny little dash. The next point is going to be the Q1, which is 15, so that's going to be somewhere here, and that's a bigger line. The Q2, or the median, is going to be in the middle and that's at 20 so that's here. Q3 is at 50 so that's over here and that's another big line and then the last one is the maximum so that's 60 that's one of these little dashes like the one on the very end. Now these three major lines you join up like this 
and that makes the box part of the graph. And the last step is to join these little bits on the end here to the rest of the box. box. And these are called the whiskers. So if you think of a cat, and he's got whiskers coming out the side. Wow, that is the worst cat ever. But these are the whiskers coming off the end here. You've got the major part in the middle and then the sweeping bits coming off. So these are the whiskers and this is the box. So just to cover that again, this first little bit here is the minimum value. Then you have a big line and that's going to be the Q1 point. In the middle of the box you have another big line and that's the median. And we like to highlight that one right in the middle of the box because that's a really important stat, isn't it? And then this top one here that makes the very edge of the box is the Q3. And the very top of your little whisker here is the maximum. Another thing that box plots can show you really clearly is the presence of outliers. And it'll appear on a box plot something like this. It could be a circle, or it might be a little dot, or it could be a cross. Um, but it's basically something that sticks outside one of these whiskers on either end. You could have it down here as well, as a cross or as a little circle, something like that. And what this tells us is that there's a piece of data, one of the numbers that was in our, um, our set, our sample, that basically didn't fit in with the pattern of the rest of them. It was really extreme either up the top end or down the bottom end. And because of that, it would make the whiskers really, really long if we left it in. So, for example, um, a box plot that has uh, an outlier in it might look like this. Something like that, which can look a little bit ridiculous. It might be just really skewed, uh, but it depends. It could be an outlier. So how do we tell if it's that the... the um, the distribution is really skewed or if it is that there's in fact an outlier in there and we should be scrubbing off this bit on the end, finishing our tail up over here somewhere and then saying, oh, this point out here, this was an outlier. Well, the rule is 1.5 times the IQR. The whisker can't be longer than 1.5 times the IQR. So I'll show you how that works. In that example, our Q3 point was 50, and our Q1 point was 15. And remember, the IQR is the distance between these two points. So it's Q3 minus Q1, which on a box plot is going to be the box part, of course, because it's from Q3 here all the way down to Q1. So this part represents the interquartile range. So the first step in determining uh, outliers is to work out the IQR. So in this case it would be 50 minus 15, which is 35. So then what we say is, okay, what's one and a half times our IQR? So we say 35 times 1.5, and that's 52.5. So we want our whiskers on our box plot to be no more than 52.5 along the number scale. So what we need to say is Q3, which is this point here, plus 52.5 and Q1 minus 52.5 to figure out the range that I want things to fit in. I want everything to be either upwards of some point or downwards from some point. So what's this magic some point down here? It correlates to this uh, little equation. So we say, okay, what's Q3? It's 50 plus this 52.5. So if anything is higher than 102.5, then we say it would be an outlier. And if anything is lower than this point, which is 15 minus 52.5, which is negative 37.5, then it would be an outlier. So the data points that fall within that range would be safe. They'd form part of the box plot. But say we had a point that was 112 as one of our data points. Well, that's above 102.5, so we wouldn't draw that one as part of the box. We'd finish the whisker at the last point, the next most previous one that didn't fall outside of our magic good fits in the box plot range. So let's just practice that. Here's a set of data. Let's figure out if any of these points are 
an outlier and whether or not we would draw them on our box plot. So the first thing we need to do is find the interquartile range. So we'll need to find Q3 and Q1. And to do that, we need to have these in order. So the first thing I'll do is just put them in order from lowest to highest. Okay, so they're in order. Now I'll count my way into the middle. One, two from the bottom, one, two from the top, one, two from the bottom, one, two from the top. There we go, median. And one, two, one, two, halfway between 40 and 42 is 41. And one from there, one from there, one from there, one from there. Halfway between 55 and 59 is 57. So I've got a Q3 of 57 and a Q1 of 40. And this is my median, but I don't need this to figure out the interquartile range. So my IQR is 57 minus 41, because it's Q3 minus Q1. So that's the interquartile range. So I'll first figure that out. So 57 minus 41 is 16. And then we say 16 times 1.5 to get 1.5 times the IQR which is 24. So now I need to know what's 24 either side of my Q3 and Q1 points. So I say Q3 plus 24 and I say Q1 minus 24. So Q3 is 57, so I've got 57 plus 24 and Q1 is 41, so I want 41 minus 24. So 57 plus 24 is 81. And 41 minus 24 is 17. So I need to know, are there any points in my data set up here which are higher than 81 or smaller than 17? If you have a look, 42, that one's okay. 48, that's okay. 52 is okay. 40 is okay. 12 is not. That's going to be uh, an outlier on the lower side. 55 is okay. 52 is okay. 59 is okay. 66 is okay. So I've got one outlier in this set, and it's there at 12. So when I'm drawing that box plot, these other points would stay the same. This would look... This point here would still correspond to 41 on the scale. This point here would still correspond to 52. This point here would still correspond to 57. This, because there are no outliers at the top, would still be the highest value, the maximum, which was 66. So that would correspond to 66. But this here would be the next lowest value that wasn't our little outlier. So this point would correspond to 12 on my scale going along here. And this tail would end at the next lowest number, which is 40. And that's how plotting outliers works. A question that I see come up sometimes on exam 2 at the end of the year is um, interpret any outliers. They ask you to write a simple statement about what the outliers mean. And sometimes outliers are real data points and they should be kept in the data. For example, um, if you're measuring speeds of cars um, and you get, you're in a 60 zone, for example, and some people are going 55, some people are going 65, they're all kind of going roughly around the 60 kilometer mark, but then one person's doing 110. It doesn't necessarily mean that that shouldn't be a data point. It might just be that there was one freakish person way out here who's speeding. So that, that's what you would say. Well, there was this one person who was crazily breaking the law. That would be your comment on the outlier. But what if you were measuring heights, for example, and you had some people who were, you know, 100 centimetres tall, 160, 180, 200, that kind of thing, and then you had someone who was 975 centimetres tall. In that case, you would say, I think this person entered the data wrong. You know, your comment on that outlier is, this can't be a point. So sometime, sometimes outliers are real, um, and they're just... They're a freak of the measurement. There's a really tall person or a really short person or a really fast person or whatever. And sometimes they're a mistake and they shouldn't be in the data set. And you can disclude outliers altogether and just say, let's just not put this in our graph because clearly that data point is just wrong. It's all kinds of wrong. 